What's up everyone, Simply Ten here, and today I'm going to be talking about rumors and leaked images of the upcoming 2021 Star Wars Lego sets. And well, recently I've been thinking about this a lot, and a lot of people have been giving Lego a lot of hate for the rumored set list. And well, I've been thinking that maybe it isn't as bad as everyone is making it out to be. And well, if you want to find out, then you better stick around for the 10 reasons why I think it might not be as bad as everyone's making it out to be. Jumping right in, I think that the number one thing that a lot of people know about but aren't really thinking about in the right way is the price. So the three sets that are really getting the bad rap for the price are the X-Wing at $50, the TIE Fighter at $40, and the Imperial Shuttle at $70. And now the problem with this isn't exactly the price, but it's more like the price means that the sets are going to be smaller. And nobody wants smaller versions of these, they want the right size, the sizes that we've been seeing. And not only that, we had a TIE Fighter and an X-Wing come out two years ago in 2018, and an Imperial Shuttle come out in the year 2017. So they're kind of recent sets that were bigger then, and they're making them small now. But this could be seen as a good thing, especially for people who um, maybe they don't have the highest uh, budget and they didn't get those other sets because they were pricier. Now they might be able to go out and pick up these sets. And the size of them is pretty decent for the price, which is number two. Now I don't have exact piece counts because I'm not that high up in LEGO society, obviously. And well, the TIE Fighter is going to have about 400 pieces, the X-Wing is going to have sort of like 490 about, I think, and then the Imperial Shuttle is going to have about 570 pieces. So think about this, TIE Fighter for over 400 pieces for $40, that's, that's like a great deal. It's what every person who dreams about price per piece dreams about is that set that's coming. The X-Wing is $50 for 450 pieces. That's good too. I mean, like when's the last time that we've seen a Lego Star Wars that have 450 pieces yet be $50? And then the last one, the Imperial Shuttle, definitely a little pricier. However, in the most recent wave, we had a General Grievous Starfighter, which had 480 pieces, so 100 less pieces than this set. And the Imperial Shuttle costs $10 less than this. So it's almost like it's going up 100 pieces, but going down $10 because the Imperial Shuttle is 70, Grievous Starfighter is 80, but Imperial Shuttle has 570, and Grievous Starfighter has 470. And for this next portion of this video, I'm going to be showing you the leaked images to show you number three, the look of these sets coming. And well, as you can see, uh, the Imperial Shuttle, I actually really like the look of this. It looks nice and sleek, and it has a nice white exterior, it has a nice little cockpit area, However, I hope that little boxy thing on the bottom isn't part of the cockpit because that looks a little weird. It might just be a weird camera angle. It could be the landing gear or something. I don't know, but either way, I like the look of this set. And then moving on to the TIE Fighter. Uh, this one looks pretty decent too. However, the problem with this one, and it's probably my least favorite one coming, however, I'm not saying that I'm mad that it's coming like a lot of people are, is that it looks like a $40 set. Compare that picture to the AAT that we got during the most recent wave, and you can definitely draw some parallels. The X-Wing actually looks pretty decent for $50. It looks like it has a pretty nice size, definitely looks smaller than the 2018 version. However, that's to be expected when it has less pieces, but at the same time, it still looks pretty decent sized for only being 450 pieces. It seems like it's gonna be a good deal to pick that set up for 50 bucks. I mean, it's, we only have one image, so it's hard to tell with just one, but it seems like it could be the best deal out of the three. And for number four, we're gonna segue right in to comparing these sets to previous models. So we're gonna start with how we did with the leaked images with the Imperial Shuttle. And this set definitely looks a little bit smaller than the 2017 version. As you can see, the wings, they look a little thinner, and the cockpit looks a little smaller. Everything just looks a little smaller. Like, you can definitely tell that it is. However, that Imperial Shuttle sold for $100, I think. 
I'm not quite sure. And this Imperial Shuttle is selling for at least $20 less, and it still looks pretty decent. Like, it just, you can tell that it's a little smaller, but it's not quite noticeable. Like, when you look at it at first glance, it still looks pretty good. And then moving right down the line, we have the TIE Fighter, and you can definitely look side by side with the 2000. And 18 version, you can definitely tell that it's almost like a miniaturized version. This is the biggest difference between all these sets. Like the TIE Fighter then to the TIE Fighter now is bigger than either of the other comparisons. And that's just because you can really tell how much cheaper the new one is going to be. Like the TIE Fighter is definitely the most disappointing out of all of them. However, it still looks good. Like it looks just as high quality, just lower quantity. And then last but not least, and it could even be the greatest, is the X-Wing. And looking back at the previous version, you can definitely tell that the 2018 model is bigger. However, at the same time, there's a reason why it's bigger, because, well, it has more pieces. And then when you take an even further step back to the 2012 version, that's right, we're going there, it actually looks like it's about the same size. And when you take inflation into account, that set cost $60 then, and this new set cost $50 now, and they look the same size. So what's happening here is this X-Wing is actually gone down in price because they look the same. Like, look at me right now and tell me that that's not the same size, that they're not the same size of set, because you can tell clearly with the TIE Fighter, but you can't tell with this 2012 version of the X-Wing. And I think that's something that we should really be looking at and congratulating LEGO for instead of slapping them in the face and telling them that it was awful of them to do what they did. And that's just it. Not only is it cheaper than the previous version that we saw in 2012, you can actually even segue into number five with this one, which is quality. LEGO has come a long ways since 2000 with LEGO Star Wars. And even in 2012, the building techniques then are not nearly as good as they are now. And to think that you're getting a way better built X-Wing for $10 less, I mean, this is a really good thing for LEGO that no one is giving them enough credit for. And with the TIE Fighter even, having them side by side, you can see that they almost were able to capture the same amount of detail in the 2021 version as they did in the 2018 version. Like it literally looks like a miniature version. Even though it has less and smaller pieces, it looks the same. If you're able to like enlarge it, Maybe keep the cockpit the same size, but enlarge the wings. It looks the same, even though it's less pieces. It's just another example of LEGO bringing up their game and increasing the quality of their LEGO sets. And number six is way different than what I've been talking about already, and that is what we don't see in these pictures. Now, we only have one photo of each of these sets, and I know that usually there's only a few functions in these sets, I mean, there could be something cool in one of these sets that's a hidden feature that no one knows about, and I'm not saying that it'll like change anyone's opinion, but maybe it'll increase people's opinions, but there could be something really cool coming that we have no idea about. And number seven, you can tell that I ran out of ideas because this was originally going to be a hidden feature, but I didn't have a tenth idea, so number seven has to do with hidden features, but specifically a hidden feature that could be on the X-Wing. Now, if you couldn't tell already, I'm really in love with the new X-Wing coming out. And another thing that a friend pointed out to me the other day, actually, is that when you look at the picture, what's missing that we usually see on an X-Wing set? Look at the wings. There's no rubber bands on the front. And I know that earlier models, like the 2012 version, didn't have rubber bands on the front, but both the 2018 X-Wing and the X-Wing from this year have rubber bands on the front of their wings. And in this picture, there are clearly no rubber bands there. Now, there could be rubber bands in the back, but what if, what if LEGO found a way to make a better X-Wing that doesn't require rubber bands? That could change your opinion of it, couldn't it? Now, for number eight, let's take a look at another reason why people are discrediting these LEGO sets, and that's because they wanted more Clone Wars sets, they wanted more prequel sets, they wanted anything but original trilogy sets. However, the problem with that is, is that this previous wave that we just got in the summer of 2020 
had almost all Clone Wars and prequel sets. So let's think about this, okay? We have the 501st Legion Clone Troopers, that's Clone Wars. Anakin Interceptor, that's prequel. Armored Assault Tank, that's Clone Wars. Knights of Ren Transport Ship, that's the sequel trilogy. So still no original trilogy. General Grievous Starfighter, that's prequel. Resistance Transport, that is a Galaxy's Edge based set. The only two original trilogy sets that we got during this wave were the Death Star Final Duel and the AT-AT. And both of those were big grand scale sets that only people with certain budgets could afford and a lot of people who liked the original trilogy were left out of this because they don't have as big of pockets as some other people do. And now with this new wave coming in winter of 2021, it gives people the opportunity to buy sets from the original trilogy that they can actually afford. And in number nine, there are a few other set rumors out there that aren't original trilogy sets. And one of them is something that a lot of people voted on, and that is the UCS Republic gunship. Now, I'm not saying that LEGO should have made other sets based off of the prequel and Clone Wars, but what I'm telling you is they're about to come out with what is possibly going to be the largest prequel set of all time. What better way to accompany the largest prequel set of all time with a bunch of little original trilogy sets? I mean, did you really want just a wave of all prequel and Clone Wars sets? You gotta have a nice even balance for all the people out there who appreciate all sides of the story. And at number 10, I've saved the best for last. And this may not seem like the best, but it has a lot of possibilities, and that is the characters coming in these sets. One of the biggest things that I think could be coming is in the Imperial TIE Fighter, and we could see yet another arm-printed Darth Vader. Now, I know a lot of people don't want another Darth Vader, but the Bespin Duel set, which was $40 this summer, was a very exclusive set that very few people were able to buy. And now, people will be able to buy a very massively produced set that has this arm-printed Darth Vader in it for the same price. Well, actually, it'll be cheaper because now the only way to get this arm-printed Darth Vader is to get the $70 set on eBay instead of getting the Imperial TIE Fighter set that has $40, which is coming out next year. Other characters that we could be seeing is a character that hasn't had a really good set for a while, and that is the Ewok. And the only part in the original trilogy that really is that iconic to me that has an Imperial transport ship in is the sixth movie, which is when they go to Endor on the Imperial transport ship. And on Endor, there's Ewoks. And the last time that we got a set with an Ewok in it was those stupid blaster set things. Now, that, now that's something to complain about, were those... <sighs> Anyways, Ewoks could be a nice addition to this set and make a lot of people want to get it because we haven't had a decent set with Ewoks in a while. Not only that, but we haven't had a Princess Leia in a while. The only Princess Leia that's been available for the past few years is one that's $200 or more. You could have only gotten her in the Tantive 4 set, which came out last year, the Betrayal at Cloud City set, which came out a couple years ago, or the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon, which came out three years ago. And well, there's not very many people out there who are willing to pay that amount for Princess Leia. And now, with the $70 Imperial Shuttle, there's a lot cheaper chance for newer collectors to pick up this figure. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to let me know in the comment section down below if I changed your mind, or if you still think the same old, same old about the new sets that are coming. And as always, be sure to like and for sure subscribe. I need your subscription. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.